Hi, I'm Alex McCrickard, and I'm coming to you today from the beautiful Nottoway River here in Southeast Virginia. And we're gonna be talking about shad fishing. It's the month of April. April means shad fishing in Virginia. The, the Nottoway is a, a beautiful setting for fishing for shad off the beaten path. It's part of the Chowan drainage. We're gonna explore this resource today and, and get on some shad. Additionally, we're gonna hear from Eric Brittle, DWR Fisheries Biologist, who's been with the agency for over 20 years. Eric has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to these resources in Southeast Virginia. And we're gonna hear from Eric today about what makes the Nottoway River unique. Our day started with catching a few shad before we even launched the boat. We were even able to land an American shad from the bank. Beautiful day out here on the Nottoway River. And this is what it's all about, finding a beautiful American shad here. This fish has swum thousands of miles. Uh, from offshore the Atlantic, um, up here into the Nottoway River. We're part of the uh, Chowan drainage here. The American shad, uh, when their mouth closes, the, uh, the lower jaw and the upper jaw come together evenly. Uh, we're gonna get this fish back in. Beautiful fish to get out here on the Nottoway. They're, they fight like crazy. Um, awesome fish, we'll send them home. Beginning in Prince Edward and Lunenburg counties, the Nottoway River meanders its way for approximately 130 miles through the Piedmont and coastal plains of Southeast Virginia. This fishery offers anglers the opportunity to fish for shad in a swamp environment. There's one. There you go. Well, that's a nicer. This hickory or is that a net? He took that top fly. I think it's a bigger hickory, but we'll get a good look at him here. Nice. Got a nice adult hickory shad here. These hickory shad, one of the telltale identifying characteristics is you look at the jaw, and he's opening his mouth right now so we can really see, but, or she is. Um, the, uh, the underbite here, there's a protrusion on that lower jaw where it'll extend out beyond the upper jaw. Um, whereas the American shad, when the upper jaw and, and lower jaw uh, close, they're even. You can see here there's a, you know, there's a gap, there's an underbite there. Um, but uh, yeah, nice. Adult hickory shad, we'll let them go. All the way up the Nottoway into this tributary, and we're only fishing, you know, a creek here that's 15 to 20 yards wide, and the fish are stacking up. There he goes. Lift his head here, Eric. Oh! Whoa. Classic hickory shad. They're acrobatic. There we go. Nice. Nice little male hickory shad from the Nottoway River. This is a big fish, real big fish. Oh, that's a nice shad. That is a nice, nice, nice shad. Big fish. Got an American on here, bulldogging me. Eric's going for the net. All right, I'm gonna swing him to the right, Eric. I'll try to get him into this soft water, but he's he's digging. Yep. Right behind the boat. All right, All right. I see it. Ready, Eric? Here he comes. Yep. Get that guy in the net for me. Scoop that fish. Oh, get him in the net. Come on, got baby. A, got a short handled net. Does not want to give it up. I'm trying to turn this fish. All right, net him, net him, net him. Yeah, nice. All right, we're out here on the Nottoway River. Eric, we got another beautiful American shad here. This is a really good one. This time on the fly rod, put up a heck of a fight. Uh, let's give him a quick drink here. But just a real full bodied fish, deep. Great one to get out here. So we're lucky today to be joined by Eric Brittle. Um, Eric, you've been managing a lot of these uh, water bodies in Southeastern Virginia for many, many years. We're out here on the Nottoway. What makes this water body unique in your eyes? Well, Alex, I think what makes this so unique is the remoteness yeah. of the fishing opportunities here. You come out here, you might see one or two other fishermen all day long. Sure. And you're not in a, a typical setting that you would fish for shad in Richmond. Right. Or in Fredericksburg or, or, or Washington, D.C., up yeah. on the Potomac. Exactly. You can come out here, find your little stretch of river, fish for these fish around cypress trees, yeah. tupelos, get back up in the swamps. Yeah. And really catch, catch a lot of fish and a lot of healthy fish. Shad spend the majority of their adult life cycle offshore in the ocean. Um, these shad here are swimming from those offshore currents where they're schooled up. They're coming in through Oregon Inlet into the 
eastern North Carolina drainages and then coming up the, to their uh, tributary, their natal streams where they were spawned. Um, that typically starts somewhere right around January 1st with some of the early herring and goes all the way through uh, the peak of the runs in late March, all the way through April, maybe even early May, depending on water temperatures. These fish come up in here earlier than what you see move up into the Chesapeake Bay. They will spawn. Um, the males typically return at, at age three. The females typically return at age four. And then these fish will swim back out to the ocean, live out the rest of the year, and then come the next year and, and repeat the process every year. It's unlike what you see with salmon on the West Coast, where it's a one and done deal, where they come up and spawn and then die. And as far as habitat goes for anglers, where should they be focusing on casting? You're out here on the river, right? Talk a little bit about some of the habitat preferences of these fish and, and what you can look for as an angler. So like a lot of fish that you might fish for in a river, they're sure. looking for those slack water areas. So if you can find a little eddy behind a tree, yeah. a piece of structure. Uh, inside, little, inside turn. Inside turn, you know, anything like that that's giving them a little reprieve from yeah. the uh, from the float. Sure. These fish have been swimming for, for weeks, yeah. you know, and that's what they do, but they still like to have a little resting spot when they get up to where they're going to, yeah. to the spawn. So find those little areas, throw your lures in those little breaks, and then... Yeah. And you're out here every week, right? Yes. Yeah. We do our, uh, our monitoring weekly. Uh, we're looking at uh, alewife numbers, hickory shad numbers, American shad numbers, striped bass numbers, and then blueback herring, which is the last herring and anadromous species to come up in the river. We're looking at all of those four or five peaks throughout the spring and comparing those year to year to look at the trends. Track and look at trends. But anglers do need to be aware of the moratorium. You want to speak on that? Yeah, so there's no possession of American shad, and you can keep up to 10 hickory shad per day. Yeah. Um, here in the Chowan system. In the so Chowan that, system, okay. In the Chowan drainages. So that's not a way. Uh, Blackwater, Meharan, it also includes Northwest, North Landing, and, and Back Bay and their tributaries. Sounds good. And then also moratorium on blueback herring and alewife. Yes, all herring species, alewife and blueback both, there's, there's no possession. Yeah. As far as access goes, where are some of the good public access points? I know we're at one of our agency boat ramps right now. Where can, where can folks go to fish this resource? Correct. So we're here at Curie's Bridge today. There's also Peter's Bridge, which is approximately 10 or 11 miles uh, upstream of here. Yeah. There's a great boat ramp down outside of the city of Franklin called Hercules Boat Ramp. And then there's some other smaller boat ramps uh, in between all of these boat ramps that you can access. And, and this is perfect for like a John boat. You don't have to have a John boat. Uh, kayak, canoe is good. And as we saw today, plenty of opportunities to bank fish from these access points too. And when the fish are in here, the action can be fast and furious. Yeah, it's... It can be nonstop. If you if you find a good spot and you can get there and, and get anchored up in a great spot, or if you find a good bank fishing yeah. spot, you know we caught half a dozen fish in less than 30 minutes or so just standing here on the shoreline here when we first started. And quite a good bit of diversity today. We got uh, oh, yeah. numerous uh, alosa species. You got blueback herring and a, and a, a hickory shad. Uh, we we caught some other hickory shad. We caught a few American shad, which was exciting to see. Um, one striped bass, which was a nice little mix too, and then that smallmouth at the yeah. end that Ron caught. So um, great day all around and just some, some great diversity on this resource. Yep. So we're gonna go over really quickly some of the basic approaches uh, to fishing for shad with a spinning rod um, and, and lures or a fly rod. And remember, when these shad are running, they're solely focused on the spawn. They're not actively feeding, but we're trying to trigger a reaction strike. And a lot of times we're looking at shiny, flashy colored lures or flies to swing in front of these fish to irritate them. They're very territorial on their spawning run um, and they'll lash out and strike at something that swings in front of them. Uh, anglers focusing on spin fishing techniques, one of the most common patterns that they'll throw is a, a, a spoon, right? This is a, a classic lure choice for shad. Uh, gold, they come in silver, some of them are neon green, orange, and a lot of times when we fish these spoons to get them further out into the river, we'll put a weight in front of them. Um, I like using a quarter ounce sliding um, sliding weight here, um, a 3 8 ounce uh, sliding cone weight is good as well. And I'll typically attach those um, above a swivel with a bead to kind of protect that. And then I'll maybe run 18 to 20 inches of monofilament. Um, usually eight pound test is fine. Um, you can go lighter if you want, six pound. You can go heavier if you're um, around snags. Um, the spoon is a classic choice. Another choice is a uh, shad dart. They come in a variety of different sizes and colors. Again, a lot of these are going to be chartreuse, pink, 
yellow, orange, white and pink, white and orange, a variety of different color combos. You can fish these darts in tandem, um, or you can fish them uh, in tandem with a spoon. A lot of times you'll, folks will fish a dart to a spoon, and what I like doing is taking a 20 inch hunk of monofilament and just tying an improved clinch knot to the, uh, the bend of the shank, and I'll just fish them in tandem that way, cast out, steady retrieve. I want those lures down near the bottom. If I'm fishing with a fly rod, I'm always fishing with a sinking line. Um, typically with a, a heavy six weight or a seven weight, um, depending on the body of water you're on, 250 grain full sinking line can get you by. Sometimes you need heavier, like a 350 grain. Our shad flies are gonna kinda imitate the shad darts. Um, bright greens, yellows, orange. Um, a lot of these flies are tied with dumbbell eyes or, or cone, cone heads or even bead heads. And again, we're trying to swing these shad flies down to the fish get it in front of their face, and trigger a reaction strike. So these are some of the basic setups. Um, even if you've never fished before and you're interested in getting started, there's some basic lure choices that can put fish on, on, on the end of the rod for you. Thanks for tuning in to this month's fishing report. We hope you all enjoy this wonderful resource that is the Nottoway River. We want you to come here and explore this resource. Comment below, let us know what questions you have about this fishery and shad fishing in Virginia. We'll be happy to answer them. We'll see you on the water.